All right, so let's get started with the actual coding. Um, I hope you are excited about it because I think it's it's going to be great fun and you're going to learn a lot about R. So basically, you could you could use um, this program as some kind of um, calculator, although there are easier things uh, for that purpose. What you would generally find is more sophisticated lines, like for example, stuff like this over here. So what this line does basically, it creates an object. Okay, um, and this object consists of a vector. This vector has three numbers. It's a numeric vector. We have four, five, and six. Um, whenever it comes to uh, two vectors, um, we we are using uh, the command C, and then we do we do those those brackets. Okay. We can name our our vector anything we want as long as this as this letter or the character is not occupied within the system. Um, what you need for this assignment, you you always need um, an assignment um, symbol. In this case, I used the arrow. It's it points towards the um, the object name. So, for example, if I do if I want to do it this way around, okay, the other way around, so then um, the arrow would, would point to the to the right side. I would and I could I could call it Y. Same result, I get um, I get uh, another object or another vector. Um, over here in the environment you can you can then always see what kind of values or um, objects you already created um, within that section. Um, you can also get the output in the console. In this case, just, just type in the object name, Y, uh, press enter, and um, you would you would then get um, the, uh, the numbers. Um, those assignments uh, can not only be made with this arrow symbol. Another way is you could basically um, say um, you could basically use the the equal sign. Okay, the equal sign would would also um, do this this job. So now I just yeah, it um, it gets the same result. It also makes this assignment. There is also some kind of um, a bit of a longer way to do this if you would um, actually get the assign function and then you would you would have to use um, the quotes okay if you would um, quote x and make a comma because whenever there are those those brackets and you use a function then you have arguments within that function and the arguments are separated by commas okay um, and then I need I need the vector, kind of random vector I am producing here, and that should that should give us another x. Okay, so now x is four five six, and now it changed. Yeah, so that's um, that's another way of how you can do assignments. Yeah, so not um, please do not forget that. Um, Whenever you want to execute this this line, you press enter, um, and then the console runs runs the calculation. Um, you can see what kind of values you or what kind of objects you already created. You can see it by either just looking in the environment, or you could type in, for example, ls um, in brackets, and that would then also give you this kind of output. This one over here does the exact same thing. Also, you can see what um, objects or what characters are already occupied. Um, sometimes uh, you want to remove those objects. You can do it with the with the rm function, rm and brackets and um, brackets quotation and um, the name of the object. So now x should vanish and it's gone. Okay. 
Um, so now we can we can basically play around a little bit with those with those vectors. For example, you could uh, you could um, use the already existing vectors uh, to create new ones. So let's say we want to create um, the x vector. X equals uh, a vector. Um, let's say we're gonna use um, the already existing y vector. So y already is here. Then we add another uh, random number, and then again we want um, the y vector to be inserted. So that should, in this case, give us seven numbers within the vector x. Now I'm gonna press enter, and yes. I do have now uh, seven numbers. It's um, vector y, then I have this five, and then again it's uh, vector y um, at the end. Uh, you could also do an um, interesting thing. Random object name. And then I have the already existing vector. And um, now let's, um, let's actually use um, the condition smaller so x smaller than um, let's see five yeah. this should probably or this should this should give us um, another vector this vector is called um, object random and um, this vector is a logical vector so there are um, it's only true or false so um, if this position is um, so if the position is um, below five, then it's true, and if it's above five, then it's false. In this case, we should have a true a position number one, and this should be position number five. Let's see if this is correct. So we have a logical vector. Yeah. And we have um, a true here and a true here. So at these positions, it is smaller than five. Um, you could, for example, do also quite quite simple stuff. Like let's say, let's say we want to sum up our our vector. We could just type in sum and vector name. In this case, it's hundred and seventy-five. We could also get the square roots for all the numbers within the vector you could just in this case just type in uh, square root um, x and now we get we get all um, the square roots or what else could we do uh, we could for example if we type in x um, brackets but in this case it is um, it is basically um, a box bracket um, and um, if it is let's say um, one okay so it's about the position so in this case if you have a box bracket um, you're searching for the for the position and what I do is I want to know um, what or what kind of value is at position one in my vector X Okay, gonna press enter, and it gave me a four. This was Martin from r-tutorials.com. Uh, concerning this video, you can of course leave a comment below. Um, if you like the video, please do not forget to subscribe and to give it a thumbs up, because that's some very important measure for us and that tells us that we are on the right track and that we are actually helping uh, people uh, to get better with R. Uh, furthermore, there are plenty of other videos about R on this channel and you are invited to also take a look on those uh, to get even deeper into R. And of course you can also take a look at the website r-tutorials.com where you can find more useful information about this program.